Hey guys, welcome back to 3D Print Farm. I am super excited today to share with you my new streamlined way of using the Photon File Validator and Chi2Box. A lot of folks have been asking me, hey Garrett, Chi2Box and the Photon File Validator just don't work with the Photon S, or it doesn't work with the Frozen Sonic Mini because of the file extension. Well, I'm going to show you today my new streamlined way of using the Photon File Validator and Chi2Box with any resin printer. Are you ready to get started? Let's do this. Hey guys, welcome back to 3D Print Farm. I've had a lot of questions from uh, a lot of my subscribers about how to use Chi2Box with the Photon File Validator. Now, since my first video, I have changed my workflow up uh, just a little bit, and I think it's going to make it a lot easier. And I also want to mention that this particular method can be used with any resin printer. So if you have a Photon S, if you have an Epax, if you have the new Frozen Sonic Mini, it doesn't matter. Any resin printer that works with Chi2Box, this method will work. Okay guys, what you'll want to do, uh, the very first thing is you'll want to go to your settings. Uh, I normally just choose just a, you can use any of the, the printers here, anything that slices as a, as a uh, CBDDLP file. Uh, what I would do is just choose a standard one like an Elgu Mars. So we're going to choose the Elgu Mars as the, as the settings. We're going to close this box out. Now I'm going to be uh, supporting a model here by artist Zane Rogers and it's the Oni Mask and it is just crazy amazing and I'm going to open that file right now. I'm going to open the STL and as you can see it's a teeny tiny teeny tiny Oni Mask. So I don't want to print it that size so what I'm going to do is I'm going to size this dude up. Okay. You can see the detail of this Oni mask. It's really cool. And, you know, if I was to print this just like this, it would use a lot of resin. So I'm going to hollow this model out. And currently I have it set at a 2.5 millimeter wall thickness with a precision of 0, 0.00. And it's selected to enter. And it looks good to me. So I'm going to go through and hollow this model. Okay, and the model is now hollow, and you can tell if the model is hollow by clicking on your slider here, and you can see it's nice and hollow on the inside. Well, when you hollow a model, you have to put some type of drainage holes in there in order to get inside of the model. Otherwise, you're going to have uncured resin trapped in there, which is no good, which leads sometimes to your model uh, after it the, the resin will cure on the inside or it will attempt to cure on the inside and your model will bust open uh, leaking uncured resin out which is no good. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put some holes in here. I'm going to dig some holes and I have got a looks like a 20 millimeter hole a depth of 4.5 millimeters so I'm going to add a hole right here and I'm going to, in fact, I'm going to add two more, maybe one right here and another. Let's put another one right here, kind of make it symmetrical, right about there. All right, so now we've got our holes and now we're ready to start adding supports. So how I add supports. I'm going to go over here to my support button and currently I've got some uh, I've got some light support set. I mean you can choose medium, heavy supports. Uh, it depends on your printer. I'm, I'm going to just go ahead and choose light supports on this. Again, uh, I'm going to leave this up to you as far as your settings are concerned. Basically what we're talking about today is how to uh, not miss supports when you're setting up a model but uh, again 
this is a personal preference as far as um, what folks like to use. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just leave this on light, but I will let you guys uh, make those changes as necessary. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this going here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this just a little bit off the build plate here. I'm going to elevate this guy. And how you do that is you just go over here to the Z axis and you click it up. Oh, I don't want to click it up. Let's see, we'll go to five. And I'm still in the good, I'm still not in the red zone, so I'm, I'm good here. So when you look at the bottom of your model, you'll see a lot of these bright red spots, okay? These bright red spots indicate areas of your model that need support. So for instance, this first area is the spot that I'm going to support first. So as you see, as I move my cursor along this line, this black looking blob here or a circle starts to converge on itself. Well, as it starts to converge on itself, when it gets right to the middle there, that's the area that's going to need supporting because that's the technically what would be the island. And what I mean by island is when you scroll down through your model and as the model builds, you can see here these two little guys that are floating out in space here, those are your islands. So what I like to do just for fun is I like to go through here and I like to start setting my supports up. So I have supports here. So I'm gonna put one, let's get this down here so you guys can see this. I'm gonna find my circle, wait till it goes to a point and boom, put a support there and I'm gonna add another support right there. Okay, so I've got some support on my model. It's not gonna support the entire model because I've got lots more models. So what I start doing is I start using my, my arrow keys here and I start growing the model. Now you see, just with a couple clicks of my arrow keys, I'm at, I'm at here and you can see where the, the islands start to appear. Well, really all you have to do is just come under here, put another support, put another support, and you can see there was one right in there. So put another support. And let's just, I'm just gonna hold my up arrow key and you'll see the model start to grow. Oh, you see that? There's a spot there and there's gonna be one right here that will need support. So I'm gonna put one here and put one right there. All right, and now it's gonna continue to grow, continue to grow. And so the idea is that you want the model, you want to orient the model on the build plate so that it builds upon itself. So you'll use the fewest amount of supports. So as you can see, uh, I don't really have any other islands. So, I mean, this is actually going really well. So it's starting to move up, starting to move up, starting to move up some more. And now, even though it looks like, hey, you know, Garrett, there's some red spots on here, but if you notice how when I float my mouse over here, it really, the, the black circle really doesn't go to a point. It actually just kind of expands. And what that's telling me is there's really no islands there. There's nothing that I need to support. In fact, you could see that just by me clicking, this is the down, I'm clicking the down arrow now, and as it continues to grow, this is the up arrow. You can see the model continuing to grow. Oh, there we go, now there's a couple spots there. So you'll notice two islands. Again, these islands that float out here, they need to be supported. So when I move my mouse inside those, you'll see, you see how the circle converges on itself? So I wanna wait till it converges, click there, go back over here and click there, okay? So now, let me go back a little bit because I missed one. There's another one that needs to be supported. Okay, so I'm gonna go here, support that one. I bet you, since it's a symmetrical model, I'm gonna have something happen over here. And it looks like there's one right there that I need to support. Okay, so you guys kind of get the idea. So as I'm, as this is building out, and again, this is not taking a whole lot of time. I mean, I'm just 
kind of going through here, you can see a bunch of islands over here. All right. So now you're probably telling yourself, you know, that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and print it. It'll probably be fine. But what I like to do at this point is I like to go through the Photon File Validator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up the Photon File Validator. And I'm going to put it, I'm using dual monitors, so I'm going to keep it on the other monitor. But this is what the Photon File Validator looks like. So it's basically just a, um, a black screen here. I've got an open file button. There's some other options up here. But I'm going to show you, this is going to be the secret on, on how this works and how I have changed my workflow and how it has improved uh, me finding these islands that I've missed tremendously. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to slice this. You're wanting, you're going to want to slice it as a CBDDLP file. So if you guys remember, I had initially set this as an Elgu Mars. Now we're going to do this assuming that you have a AnyCubic Photon S. Leave it as the Mars. Don't mess with it. Just leave it alone as the Mars. I'm not going to save it. I'm going to slice it. So what I'm doing is I'm slicing the model and I'm getting it to a point where after I slice it I'm going to save it out as a temporary file so the Photon File Validator can open it. I'm going to save this and I am going to I'm just going to call it and you can note it, notice this the save as file type Chi2 box slicer CBDDLP file that's the file that you want so I'm just going to call this uh, Oni uh, we'll call it Oni test Okay, I'm going to put this on my desktop here. On my desktop, only test. Okay, so now we know that the file has been saved because you look down here, it says write successfully, open the folder. So what I'm going to do is I am going to drag this over here so you guys can see it. I'm going to open the file. I am going to look on my desktop and I am going to look for the Oni test and I'm going to open it and now you can see the photon file validator is calculating the photon file layer you'll see there's 2553 layers and it's going through and looking for islands okay it found a bunch of unsupported islands so this is the change to my workflow. First, I'm going to click the Fix button. What the Fix button will do, as you can see here, it is going to fix all of the minor errors where pixels only connect by the corners or the spaces between pixels is only one pixel. Those I am not worried about. Do not worry about those. So what I want to do is you can see there's 234 layers with islands. So I've got a lot of mistakes in my file that I need to fix. But some of those mistakes are one pixel mistakes. I don't care about those. Those will fix themselves. But what I'm trying to do is pare down the number of layers that I have to deal with so I don't have to go through one layer at a time with all 234 of them. So I click the start button. So I'm I'm starting on layer zero here, and I'm going to go here. Now you can see there's a tiny dot right here, and that is at layer 113. Layer 113, and as if you look at the as you look at the model, you can kind of see how it's built out. You got these two blobs here, but you've got a tiny spot here that the photon file validator says is unsupported. And you can see them here if you want to go through them. It's, you know, 113, 488, 500. I'm going to go through them one at a time here. I'm going to do it really quickly, and uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and fix those. So what I want to do is I'm going to go over to layer 113. So I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to go here. I am going to go back to my supports, and I'm going to go down to layer 113, which is right... See right here, let me zoom in. 113. Alright, so there's 112. You can see those two dots. 
There is 113. Check that out. So, yes, it is technically supported, but probably not supported well enough. So see this little strip right here? I am just going to put another spot right there. So if I bounce back here, and now I'm going to go to layer 488, there's a big spot right there. I mean a huge spot that's unsupported. Now I would have missed that. So all I have to do is I bounce back here to Chi2 box, look at, um, let me orient this the way it's supposed to be. I'm going to go up to 488, which is right here, 488. All right, can anybody, can everyone see this? 487, 48, look at that, right there, 47, 48, there's a spot I missed. So all I have to do is go down, boom, support it. There we go, go back here, next. There's another huge one there that I missed. That is layer 500. So I bounce back, go over here, go up, layer, there it is right there, 500, boom. Right there, okay, now that's fixed. Go back, and you can kind of see, so here's the next one, is I've got a 504, which is another spot, which looks like it was on the, uh, actually on the other side. So if I go up to 504, you can see it right here. Let me zoom in, there's 503, 504. So there is a spot there. All right, so you guys kind of get the gist of what's going on here. So what I'm doing is I'm just going back and forth between the Photon File Validator and Chi2Box and finding all of these spots that are unsupported. So, this model should be fully supported thanks to the Photon File Validator in Chi2Box. And as you can see, it used the minimum amount of supports because you really want to use the minimum amount of supports necessary to um, fix your model up. So now, you, now you're asking yourself, well, this is all fine and good, Garrett, but this is sliced for a, you've already sliced it, you sliced it for an Elgu Mars, how do I fix this for my Anycubic Photon S? Easy. You simply go back here to your settings, click your settings button, go down to Photon S, make sure all your settings are correct, click the X button, and slice away. Okay, there you go, Photon S. If I save this out, check it out. It's saved as a Photon S or a dot Photon S file. So all I have to do is name it, save it to the desktop, and it is, you can see it is writing, it is saving. So yes, the Photon File Validator does work with the Photon S, but again, you have to use my little trick, which I'm gonna go over here in summary. There it is, only wall piece for a Photon S. So there it is. Put that on your memory stick, stick it in the Photon S, print away. All right. So, again, the reason why I use the Photon File Validator is that it, you know, when you, when you set these files up and you start applying your own supports, there's a lot of good YouTubers out there that can teach you how to set up supports in your models, and uh, they do a fantastic job of showing you where to put, put things, because you really want to try to get away from using the automatic supports, because the automatic supports, they're not 100% and they tend to add more things than necessary. And this is what I'm going to show you how, why. As you can see, this model is fully supported and it will print. But if I were to go in here and I were to delete these supports, I'm going to remove them. Okay, well, let me do this. I want you to look first, guys. Okay, I want you to look. You see how little supports there are. It is 100% supported. Very little supports. Very little supports under here, okay? Because we did this manually, and we went through and put it through the Photon File Validator, everything is supported. But if I go through and I remove these, and I go through and say, you know what, I'm gonna do 
this. I want to add automatic supports because I don't want to mess with this. I want you to watch what happens when you add automatic supports to a model like this. Okay, look at this. Look at this mess. Okay, oh my gosh. All the supports on the inside, all this junk under here, which is not needed, all this under here, all this is going to leave you with is spots on your model that you're going to have to clean up. Okay? So again, here's the model that was supported by Chi2Box. Now, I am going to show you the model that I'm going to delete this model here and I'm going to use I'm going to delete this model here and I am going to open the file that I sliced earlier and there she is this is the one that I printed on an Elgu Mars I also printed it on a Sonic Frozen Mini and these are the exact supports that I used no auto supports again you probably see a few more little supports that we didn't cover again we kind of blew through that real quick but again you kind of get the idea again in summary what you'll want to do is go into settings choose any one of these files here choose either a Photon, a Mars anything that saves out as a CBDDLP file. Once you do that, go back, import your model into the file here. Go through, you know, tilt it, do whatever you want, you know, make it big. You know, I don't care what you're doing here, just, no, I can't, can't do it here. All right, so, okay, get it all oriented the way you want to do it. Go through, set your supports up, get your supports set up, go through, put everything that you want to in this until you get it perfect. By your standards, manual supports, okay? Get all the manual supports set up that, you, that we went through. Then you want to go back here, slice it. Again, when you slice it, it's going to slice it as a CBDDLP file because that is the file that the Photon Validator uses. You see? Chi2Box CBDDLP file. I save that guy out. Don't close Chi2Box. Just go back. Okay, it saved it out. Open that file in Validator. Run the fix. It fixes all the teeny tiny items there that you don't need anyway, the one pixel islands that you don't need. And then just go through layer by layer by layer and finding all those unsupported islands. Okay, guys, I hope that answered a lot of your questions. Again, I have really, this is a streamlined version of the Photon File Validator where I don't have to go in and I have to save the file and try to print from the Photon File Validator because it's in a different file format. And uh, I hope this helped uh, streamline your workflow and supporting your models and printing perfect prints every time. Again, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate. I'm gonna post some links in the description below for Zane Rogers and his awesome models. And if you like those, please purchase those from Mr. Rogers. He's an awesome guy, and um, uh, you're really going to enjoy his, his print. So anyway, guys, I'm glad uh, that you were able to join me today. Again, hope to see you next time on 3D Print Farm. Of using the Sonic, uh, my new streamlined way, of using the, my new streamlined way of using the, huh?